Learn how this close sea lines are back at Sandy Bay. These sleeping beauties are bulls. At the moment they're at peace, but it won't last, it never does. This summer will be no different from all the rest. And soon the mood here will change for the rarest sea lion in the world. That change begins one day in late November. For every hooker sea lion, the summer holidays are over. Sandy Bay is on Enderby Island to the south of New Zealand, and it's in late November that the first golden cows arrive back here. The cows come from the cold waters of the subantarctic and as days go by, they begin to outnumber the bulls. It so happens that bulls who've gained territories near the water's edge have a very slim chance of keeping any of these cows as wives. Because their territory is down the beach, this puts them down the social ladder and the cows are not at all won over by their charms. Their urge is to join their sisters well up the beach. The cows are also very, very pregnant. They'll be giving birth within a couple of weeks, but all must run the blubbery gauntlet. Once up on the beach, the cows are here to stay. They begin their breeding lives at four years, and every year from then on, they come back. bull is doomed to fail in his quest for a wife. And there's no way in the world he can win a cow like this. His only chance is to challenge and defeat one of the beach masters. A beach master has the best real estate on Sandy Bay and he's also one of the few bulls with the cows. But it's the cows themselves that decide where they'll settle. So the beach master is like a winner in a raffle. He's acquired 40 wives by owning the lucky territory. But whether he'll keep them is another matter. And for the time being, they rest. The first one is born at night, as so often happens to human mothers and a cold, blustery dawn greets this season's first pup. She's carried it inside her for a whole year. It will now stay beside her for another year. Perhaps the birth of the first pup is a signal, or is it because the sea lion summer has perfect rhythm? 
Each cow moves apart from the press of bodies to deliver her pup. They have no pelvic bone, so birth is relatively easy. As far as is known, twins have never been born to a hooker's sea lion cow. But to the single pup, it matters little whether it comes out head or tail. The birth of her pup changes the cow. She finds another side to her normally passive nature. For a day, perhaps two, she savagely defends a personal territory. The skewers are there to share in every sea lion birth. They deal with the afterbirth, the stillborn and the weak. They also help strong pups to survive by keeping the beach clean and free of disease. Births are now happening so frequently that skewers are hard pressed to keep up. are becoming more aggressive as some cows are ripe for mating. However, others are yet to give birth. This is a case of mistaken identity. The cow on the left is still to pup, yet she feels that this one is hers. It's a confusing time. It's also dangerous, particularly for the pups. Most cows are in heat and the beach masters begin to topple as they're hounded by the bulls from near the water. Most challenges are put down by bluff. A few require the use of violence then occasionally the colony will erupt in a full-scale riot. She wants to go to sea and who can blame her at the moment? Her pup is now always hungry and she must feed to produce more milk. There's no escape, but she certainly won't stay with the shore ball. She must return to the beach and her beach master. The cow allows herself to be served maybe three times by the beach master. His courtship is awkward and brief and copulation is the reflex that follows. And only if she's lucky does the bull take some weight on his front flippers. The cow will most certainly resist him if she's not ready to mate. 
and also she'll discourage him when she's had enough. While their parents are making sea lion whooping, the pups wisely stay well out of the way. They've grown quickly, and they use their mobility to come together in groups or creches between territories. It's a wise move given the heavy traffic at Sandy Bay. But it's not all barge and bluster. Something prevents an all-out fight between these four bulls. One strikes, then all four suddenly turn away. What you don't see, you can ignore, seems to be the rule. But other challenges can't be ignored quite so readily. Each day the pups sit bewildered as all around them bulls heave and grunt in combat. Most mating is over, but the fighting goes on. The beachmasters are losing control and now the shore bulls rush in. The bull pups, if they survive this fiasco, will learn that for hooker sea lions, all fighting is ritual. The strike for the flipper, the weak spot. Every move has a counter move. These two exchange blows about the head and push chests like sumo wrestlers. And all the while, each is waiting for the other to drop for the flipper. This one won't be a beach master for another 10 years. And this one, he was beach master for just one day and now lies with the other wounded warriors at the far end of Sandy Bay. Booker's sea lions are kept warm and protected by their fat. This wound looks much worse than it is. The fat has saved it. And on a beach master, most of that fat is around his chest, in this case making him completely oblivious of the pup that he's squashing. A cow will do little to help her pup in distress, and by the end of mating, there's quite a few casualties. The end of mating also brings another change of mood to the colony. The young bulls run wild through the cows. The beach masters have really begun to lose control now. With pupping and mating over, the cows have earned their freedom and the beach masters are powerless to stop them. All these bulls haven't eaten since they came ashore two months ago. Quite understandably, they've lost their dash and the cows easily slip away to join the four o'clock rush. The first part of the sea lion summer is over. The time of the beach master is finished. The rest of it belongs to the cows and their pups. Each cow spends two days at a time squid fishing, but each pup still has a lot of living to do before it will swim at her side. In the last month, things have changed around here. After two days at sea, she goes straight to the place where she last left her pup. He's been doing a little adventuring in her absence. Both know each other's call by now. The reunion 
shouldn't take very long at all. It's a male. Already his coat's becoming darker. When they meet, she identifies him instantly and in the same movement, the nipple is proffered. His first few mouthfuls are equal parts milk and comfort. Then he relaxes. He can take his time now. His mother has been topped up and is going to be home for a few days. Sea lion milk is five times richer than cow's milk. He's doubled his birth weight in his first month. The summer now belongs to the pup. He drinks, he sleeps, and then he goes off exploring Sandy Bay. But he doesn't go down to the water. Instead, he joins all the other pups at the top of the beach. The first thing they encounter are the rabbit burrows. Rabbits were liberated here last century, and their burrows can be death traps. Sea lions move about on land using their front flippers, but only in a forward direction. This one crawled in by a wider entrance. With its flippers pressed hard to its body, it might stay wedged here and die. The pup next discovers the meadow. Up here there are more burrows and more of his trapped brothers. Each year, one pup in ten dies in the rabbit burrows above Sandy Bay. A little later, he meets Sam. And what starts out as a game, turns sour for the pup. This young male came ashore after mating, but he behaves as if he's a beach master. Sam is short for sub-adult male, one who's just coming to terms with his own masculinity. And Sam's fight over pods of pups in the same way as beach masters fight over their harems. The Sam herds his pups up against the sandbank. This also forces some into the rabbit burrows and a slow death by suffocation. This behaviour is instinctive and is practice for the day when the fight is for golden cows and not these wrinkly pups. And when Sam eventually becomes bored with his pubescent game, he lets them go. Our pup's curious nose takes him straight to... Well, what precisely is it? It's drinkable, yes, but rather tasteless. Does he sense that it's his real environment, or is water completely alien to this little landlubber? Whatever, he's to meet it again quite soon. Each new journey makes him stronger, and each new find leaves him wiser, and he seldom goes home. He can't swim at all yet, so with an accomplice, he walks through the pools with his back flippers pulled forward. On one of these journeys, he puts his head right into this wet stuff for the first time. 
He closes his eyes at first, but then opens them. Only to discover that he can see just as well in water as out of it. That's certainly something for a pup. All the pups spend a lot of time with their teeth sunk into each other's hides. This fighting is really play with a purpose. They're strengthening their backs, their limbs and their jaws for a life at sea. This is the way the pup will deal with the squid he will one day catch for himself. But his childhood is nearly over. One day he's commanded to leave his playmates and give some serious attention to what's at the bottom end of the beach. This is no puddle. It's the real thing. None of his adventures seem to have prepared him for this moment. The pup's first walk into the sea for a swimming lesson is the beginning of the end of the sea lion summer. swimming lessons will go on and eventually the pup will leave Sandy Bay and stay at his mother's side until she returns next summer. However, some sea lions won't be leaving here. It's now time to add up the success of the breeding season. That's done by following the seabirds. If skewers are camp followers of the sea lion, so too are these giant petrels, the vultures of the southern seas. They will depart after the sea lions have gone. For them remains the job of cleaning up, of picking clean the bones and devouring the litter of the summer's many tragedies. And next summer, it'll be exactly the same. The golden cows will come in from the sea and the newborn pups will announce their presence. But the hooker's sea lion summer is fragile. It takes place on four beaches far to the south of New Zealand. It belongs to a sea lion which is both the most socially advanced and the rarest in the world. And these Bonaparte's gulls are among the countless species of birds who get their living from the sea. The common merganser is also a raider of the ocean larder. Creatures, such as the curious emperor penguins. They share this domain with one of the sea's most awesome predators, the leopard seal. And when it chooses to hunt, pandemonium seizes the penguin population.
The leopard seal is a prodigious killer and the only seal known to attack man. The desperate efforts of the penguins to reach safety on the ice are to no avail. The hunter tracks his prey beneath its surface and leaps through the icy crust to the kill.